We've learned a lot about this Manchester United team from that Brighton performance, from the Brentford performance, from the four games since. And we've seen the, the things that Eric Ten Hag has been doing and the improvements that he has got. But Real Sociedad on the Thursday is a massive game for Ten Hag because it's his chance to see this squad in action. We've got nine games coming up in October. We're not playing that starting 11 that played against Arsenal, that played against Liverpool every single week. It's not possible. He needs to be able to rely and to trust his second 11. So what I'm going to do in this video is run through my predicted team for this game against Sociedad and the changes I expect. And I think there will be quite a lot of them because Ten Hag needs to know that he can trust these players. Just like we as fans need to know that we can trust these players because we couldn't last season and we haven't been able to for a good few years. So make sure you please subscribe to United People's TV and let's jump into this conversation. This was the start 11 that played against Arsenal. I don't think there was... No, there was one change, of course. It was Anthony coming in. But it's been a very unchanged 11 from his last four games. And Eric Ten Hag clearly has got a response from his players. He's backed his players. Even with Casemiro in the team, he hasn't dropped Scott McTominay. He really has been keeping this 11 because it's been delivering for him. But there will be a lot of changes on Monday. And now let's start in... in let's, let's start back in, back in goal because it's the easiest one to go to. And I think that one is quite obvious. Well, in my opinion, it's quite obvious. We've just signed Dubravka on loan. He's going to be here for the season. I would be surprised if we didn't see Dubravka between the sticks. He's going to have to be tested, right? We need to see whether or not he can play in that position. And it's up to Eric Ten Hag to give him this game to choose that. He might play Tom Heaton, he might not. But I think we'll see Dubravka between the sticks. And in terms of that back five, look, it's been settled in these last few games, hasn't it? We've had Madasir, we've had Delo, we've had Varane and Martinez. It's worked brilliantly. They all have worked brilliantly as a unit. That's what we need to see when these changes happen because I think we're going to see wholesale changes in our defence. Lindelof, Shaw, Maguire and Wan-Bissaka. I personally think we're going to see every single one of them come in and every single one of our back five go out. I think it will be a full change. And it's going to be their opportunity to prove to Eric Ten Hag, you know what, you can trust me. You can rely on me. Varane, sorry, Varane, um, Maguire came on for the last, well, for a couple of minutes, a little bit longer than a couple of minutes, against Arsenal. And, well, he got, he got a yellow card within, what, like 20 seconds? That back four was abysmal last season. Utterly, utterly abysmal. I'm not sure who was the worst player. I mean, it was probably Aaron Maguire, but they were all just absolutely atrocious and they were all dropped Maguire got dropped Shaw got dropped and it coincided with Manchester United's resurgent form they need to use this game to prove to Eric Ten Hag you know what you can rely on us as a, as a second 11 you can rely on us when you need to because we need the squad this season man we've got as I said we've got nine games in October we can't play Martinez and Varane every single game we can't play um Malasia and Delo every game we need to know that Shaw and Wan-Bissaka can do a job and Wan-Bissaka I'm just I'm terrified for. I just don't see how he suits this system. I really, really don't. I'd love to. That's the one I've really got to be proven wrong about. I just, Wan Bissaka hasn't progressed in his attacking game enough to really make me think that he can play the inverted fullback role to have that tactical new and, under, new and understanding that Malasia and Delo have showed. It's a big fundamental of the game that Ten Hag's building to build that extra body in midfield. Wan Bissaka, man. Prove me wrong. Maguire, prove me wrong. Lindelof, I've, I've, I'm pretty confident that Lindelof can do a decent job in this setup. I think as a ball-playing centre-back, when we signed him from Benfica, that was what he was good at. I'm fine with him. And Luke Shaw, refine that form, Luke. Come on, that form that got you into Euros in banging form, your team at a tournament, gold in the final. Where's that Luke Shaw? Come on. Show me him again. But I think it's going to be that as a back five. The Bravko was Shaw and Wan-Bissaka as a full-backs with Maguire and Lindelof as a two centre-backs. And in midfield, I think we will see wholesale changes again, and I'll be very, very surprised if you. I mean, I swear to God, if I see if I see Ericsson play, start another game, complete another ninety minutes, please no, just let him have a rest. I think when you've got a midfield duo like Fred and Casemiro on the bench, you use them. This is a game where Casemiro, without question, starts. I've said it in the last couple of games, and Eric Ten Hag has stuck with Scott McTominay. That's proven correct. Those decisions have been vindicated with the performances of Scott McTominay and the, and the results at Manchester United. But this game is where Casemiro comes in from the start and we see what he can do. And in my opinion, he should be partnered in midfield with Fred. Eriksen needs and does maybe Maybe he doesn't need a rest. Maybe he's fitter than we all think he is, but I think he deserves a rest. 
And I would rather save his legs so that are 100% fresh for Crystal Palace on Sunday, which is the more significant game. This is a game where we have to see about this 11 and whether they can play ball or not, just like that first 11 has in these last four games. And look, that is a back, look at that as a back six that is now going to be, what, our second 11? What, second 11 at the moment? Casemiro is not a second 11 player, but he's currently not in the starting 11. That's a good back six compared to last season. I personally think that Bruno will stay in. Bruno is a player that just plays constant football. I think out of all the players, if I'm going to see someone's going to be fit enough to play here on Thursday and, and then again on Sunday, I'd probably say Bruno. Uh, if Van der Beek was fit and not injured, I think we could probably have a conversation about that and, and playing him there. Maybe you'll see Ericsson play there, but I think I'd rather have Ericsson have a rest. And I think Bruno's going to be fit enough to play. So that would be my, my back five and my midfield three. Bruno staying there with Fred and Casemiro. And up front, I think there will definitely be changes. Now, Anthony, of course, made his debut. And I personally think that Anthony will be starting again against Real Sociedad. He got, what was it, 60 minutes he got um, against Arsenal. I think he needs a bit, he'll need, ideally, I want to see that again. I want to see Anthony come on and start this game and then go off in around about the 60th minute mark, probably for Elanga, something like that. So I'm going to keep Anthony on the, on the pitch and I'm going to keep him playing on the right-hand side, which is going to be his own. That's going to be where he crafts his work this season. He won't really play anywhere else. He's going to be a right winger for Manchester United, and I think he should be starting this game. Now, in terms of the left wing and up front, I think there are two changes that, that will be happening. I don't think Sancho will start this game. I think he'll be rested. And you could put in Ilanga or Garnacho. Now, Martial, of course, if Martial wasn't injured, he'd be a conversation here for going up front. But I don't, I don't think he's back from his injury just yet. Maybe he is, and if he is, that kind of changes it. But in my opinion, I would like to see this lad. When he played against Rayo Vallecano at Old Trafford, he was pretty damn good in the preseason. He hasn't had too much of an opportunity. And I personally think out of all the options that we've got there on the bench, the person that I would like to see most on the left wing as an alternative to Sancho is Garnacho. Now, Rashford could technically drop there and play on the left. And I'll be honest, that's his best position. But I think I would like to see Garnacho there. And Rashford, I also think, will be rested too. Cracking performance. But this is a time where we're going to get to see Ronaldo start a game. Right? Ronaldo's going to have to deal with the fact that it's going to be the Europa League anthem and not the Champions League anthem. But sod it, man. Albert, do a Mourinho, Ronaldo. Be in the competition once in your life and win it. Well, that's what he did in the first time. In the first time he won it, Ronaldo, man, just just focus on winning it and getting back into the Champions League. That'll be another trophy you can add to your CV. Brilliant. And I think Ronaldo, in my opinion, actually the performance he put in from the bench against Arsenal was his best performance so far. He looked a little bit sharper. He looked a little bit fitter. He was making good runs. Fred should have released him with a better ball, and I think he, I think he could have scored once or twice against Arsenal if the balls were better in towards the end of the game. He looked frustrated. He looked angry. He looked like the Ronaldo that was frustrated for the right reasons because people are robbing him of goals. That's, that's the right frustrations and the right moody Ronaldo that I want in my team. I think he'll start this game. But Ronnie, man, let's see what you've got. Um, I think, as I say, I think he looked fitter against Arsenal than he has done in his previous substitute appearances. But that would be my front four. Anthony on the right wing with Garnacho on the left wing, Ronaldo through the middle and Bruno staying in the starting 11. So there's a, there are wholesale changes there. It's only Bruno who survives from that. No, Bruno and Anthony, the only two players that survive from that team that played Arsenal. Survive. Wrong word. Who stay in the team from the, the team that played Arsenal. I think it's going to be a complete back five switch. Dubravka with Lindelof and Maguire. We have to see them both to play together if they're both fit and they both are. Shaw, if Shaw is still injured, then of course, simply put, you just do that. But I'm pretty sure Shaw was on the bench against Arsenal. I think he'll be fit to play. And we need to see that Sean Wan-Bissaka can come in for Malasia and Delo when they need to be rested. They can recuperate. We need to be able to trust this squad. This is the next big acid test for this squad. If you know, uh, what's the response to Brentford like? And we do that against Liverpool. Oh, but can you do it in the next game? Can you follow up? Yes, you can. And again, two clean sheets. Can you do it against Arsenal? Yeah, you can do it. Lots of questions asked of this United team over the last few weeks and games. And they've all been answered correctly. Now, this game is about seeing whether or not this 11 and play a similar style of football to what the first starting eleven would and could and have done over the last few games. How will United play midfield when Eriksen's not there? Will Fred be able to do a, a similar type of job? Probably not. But Casemiro, can they work together as a partnership? What about Maguire and Lindelof? Can they play like Varane and Martinez? Probably the biggest question is, is what's going to happen in the drop-off? 
from Varane and Martinez have been so solid together. We need to see that from those two. Questions all over the pitch. And Ronaldo, I want to see Ronaldo lead by example, grab a couple of goals, get that confidence and swagger back. And I personally would like to see Garnacho and Anthony start in the wings. You can let me know what you think about the starting 11 in the comments below. Who do you think will start? Who do you think shouldn't start? Let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Take it easy.